Welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning and Marine. In this video, I'm going to show you how to statically time a Merc Cruiser 3.0 engine. So right now, I do not have a distributor in this hole right here, and I uh, have the distributor cleaned and prepped and ready to go. Uh, before you can time an engine, you're, when you when you time an engine with a distributor, basically what you're doing is you're putting the distributor in a specific location that's mechanically locked with, through the gearing system with a certain position of the piston. So what you want to do is make sure number one piston this is the number one spark plug hole here. Just make sure number one piston is at top dead center on the firing stroke. And now that I've got this cover, I've got the uh, lifter covers, uh, lifter cover on, and I've got the valve cover on. I can really can't tell where this engine is firing stroke. So the only way, the only way left to find out is to put your finger in the uh, or lightly into the spark plug hole and turn the engine. And when you feel it pushing your finger out, that means the, the number one piston is on this upstroke on top dead center on the firing stroke. So that's what I'm about to do. So let me go ahead and do that. So if you listen for the hissing sound, you hear the air hiss on my finger. Okay, so, so at this time, I'm gonna feel for the uh, timing mark. Here it is right here, that's my fingernail. That's the timing mark. So all I got to do at this point is continue rotating the engine until the timing mark right there at my fingernail gets on the zero degree mark over on the timing tab. Once that, once they're lined up, I'll know the engine is at top dead center on the firing stroke, and then I can just start, insert the screw. So continue with the timing of this Merc Cruiser 3.0. Uh, this it's called static timing because you're doing everything statically and not dynamically. So what I've already determined is that the rotor, the distributor cap's number one tower lines up approximately with this tip of this aluminum point right here where my thumb's at. So if I, wrote to, if I line this rotor up with that point, that means it's pointing pretty much close enough to the number one top, number one uh, cylinder, number one tower in the distributor cap. So because of the, the uh, helical uh, shape of this gear, you actually have to rotate it. Um, I'll figure it out in a second, but you rotate it one, one degree, one direction or the other so that you can drop the, uh, the distributor into the, uh, what it, it lines up with the oil. If you look way down there, you'll see a slotted hole right down there. That's the slot in the oil pump. And the tip of this distributor has to go into that slot. So that means if I want my distributor installed just like this, which is the way it came out with these two electrical uh, connections pointed outward from the engine. If I look at this, this uh, bottom of this oil, bottom of this distributor, let me see if I can show it to you. It needs to point at approximately the 1130 position. Or let's see, looking down inside, it would be more like the 1230 position. Looking at it from this side, that's 1230 looking there. So that's 1230. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this oil pump to where it's at 1230. And then a little more or less, whichever way, I've, I've got to figure out which direction. I'll let you know in a minute to rotate it. But you have to rotate a little bit more so that these helical gears, as they drop in place, as they twist, everything lines up. Okay, I'm about to install the distributor in this 3.0 liter Merc Cruiser. And as I was saying, in order to get the uh, oil pump and the uh, distributor shaft to line up, this, this gear, as it drops in place, will rotate counterclockwise. So in order to get it to line up down in there, you see that slide in the oil pump. You have to rotate the uh, oil pump slightly clockwise so that as the uh, distributor drops in, it lines up with that shaft and then everything drops in. So I've already got my uh, my gasket here on the on the engine and I need to oil this gear and the uh, tip of the uh, shaft right there, most of the gear. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll put this distributor in. Okay, I've now put oil on the distributor gear I'm going to take it off a little bit. So oil's on the distributor gear. I'm about to drop this distributor in and everything should line up. As I was saying, the rotor needs to point to that, that corner right there, the corner of that loom right there when it's uh, timed. As I, so I, let me put this in and we'll see what happens. Okay, you see it did not seat all the way down, so it's too far over, so I pull it back out. Let's see if that works. Okay, that time the distributor did seat, it's seated against the engine block. And if I rotate this distributor to where the rotor is pointed to that corner, that's about where I want it. 
It's not going to be perfectly straight out, but it's close enough. So this engine is now statically timed, meaning that the engine's at top dead center, this rotor is pointing where the number one spark plug uh, tire will be, and it's seated inside the engine. So it's now statically timed. And that's how you do a, uh, that's how you put the stripper in just about any engine. You put it top dead center, you get the oil pump lined up, and then you get your rotor pointed at your number one tower on your distributor and insert it. And if everything goes well and the thing seats, you're good. So now I'm going to try to find the, uh, there's a bolt, a clamp and a bolt that holds the clamp down that goes here. And we'll find that and this distributor will be installed. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.